Okay, question one. Shot put is an Olympic event. The shot is a heavy ball. An athlete th throws the shot as far as possible. A sports scientist analyzes the athlete's throw to help improve performance. In one throw, the shot continues to rise by another 1.3 meters. 1.3 meters after it leaves the athlete's hand. The mass of the shot is 7.26 kilograms. Calculate the amount of gravitational potential energy gained. Okay, so we need to write down the formula. Gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravitational field strength. Now we know that G is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram. We're supposed to know that. Times height. Substitute, we've got a mass of 7.26, we've got g of 10, and we've got a height of 1.3. And we can just use a calculator, 7.26 times 10 times 1.23 equals 89.298. Well, we only need three significant figures, so 89.3. 89.3 and it's energy so it's joules 89.3 explain how the total energy stored in the shot changes between leaving the athlete's hand okay so we have a question now that says explain now explain basically needs a statement and a justification so we want two bullet points what is the statement? The total energy in the well, total energy doesn't change. So how the total energy stored in the shot changes. Okay, so total energy is constant. Um, but what we've got is gravitational potential energy changing to kinetic energy. So maybe it needs, energy is not created or destroyed. We've probably got everything anyway, but energy is not created, cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. Well, there's fair, two fairly good bullet points there. Question two. The figure shows a solar powered charger for a mobile phone. The screen of the solar cell takes energy from the sun. Each second, 0.12 joules of energy reaches one centimeter square of the screen. Calculate the total amount of energy. Well, we need to know the area of the screen then, don't we? So the area is equal to, what do we call it, width times depth, which is equal to 11 times 7, which equals 77 centimetres squared. OK, so if it's... 0.12 joules on one centimeter squared it's 77 times 0.12 joules on the whole cell so 77 times 0.12 equals 9.24 joules 9. 24 joules, which is the total energy on the cell. Question 3. Figure 3 shows the energy transferred by one solar panel in one second. Use the information in figure 3, that's this one over here, to calculate the efficiency. So the total input is 2800 joules. The useful output is 800 joules. We need a formula. Efficiency 
equals useful energy over the total energy, which equals 800 divided by 2,800. Okay, this is supposed to be a number less than 1. 800 divided by 2,800 equals 0.2857, so 0.286. 0 0.286. To three significant figures. No units because it's just a ratio. Question four. Some technicians are investigating factors affecting the braking distance. They start by investigating how the speed of a bicycle affects the braking distance. On the right is a graph. So they've drawn a graph of braking distance against speed. Fine. When the bicycle is travelling at 15 metres per second, well, that doesn't appear on the graph. The kinetic energy of the cyclist is 9,300 joules. Calculate the mass using this equation. OK, so as always, we still write down the equation. Mass equals 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the velocity squared, which equals, well, 2 times the kinetic energy is 9300 divided by the velocity is 15 meters a second 15 times 15 equals let's do it slowly so we've got 2 times 9300 equals 18600 and then we've got that divided by 15 times 15, that didn't work, 15 times 15, which is 225. So check with the calculator, 18600 divided by 225 equals 82.66666. So 82.7, 82.7. 82 kilograms. Describe the energy transfer that takes place as the cyclist brakes. Well, it's a two mark question, so we're looking for two bullet points. And I would say we've got kinetic energy, which is what we start with, and that transfers to sound, because obviously the brakes squeal as you grab them. And we've also got kinetic energy transferring to heat or thermal energy. That's two very good points and it's only a two mark question. So yep, I'm happy with that. Right, question five. The blades of the flan are turned by an electric motor. In one second, the motor gets 200 joules of energy, electrical energy. Only 180 joules of this is used. The rest is wasted. Calculate how much of the 200 joules is used. So this is going to be 200 joules. There's not really a, calc a formula. So 200 joules minus the useful 180 joules is equal to 20 joules. So the wasted energy is 20 joules. 200 is the total, 180 is the useful, that means 20 is the wasted. State what happens to the wasted energy. Well, we always say lost to the surroundings as heat is the most common answer. Lost to surroundings as heat. I'm sure you'd get away with other things such as sound, etc. Calculate the efficiency. Well. Again, we need a calculation. Efficiency equals useful over total, which equals the useful is 180 divided by the total, which is 200. We're looking for a number less than 1. 180 divided by 200 equals 0 0.9. 
Very good, very efficient. 0 0.9, it's a ratio, so it doesn't need units. Right, question six. In a science fiction story, lightning is used as an energy source for accelerating a car. That's back to the future. In the story, the car has a kinetic energy of 960 kilojoules at a speed of 40 meters per second. Watch out, 960 kilojoules, that's a big number. So we've got to go 960000. Calculate the mass. Well, we need a formula. There's only one formula really with kinetic energy, which is kinetic energy equals a half m v squared but we want the mass so we need basically oh let's rewrite this let's write this as kinetic energy equals 0 0.5 times m times v squared let's then get rid of the 0 0.5 put it at the bottom let's get rid of the v squared put that at the bottom too so we've got a rearranged equation, which is um, M equals kinetic energy divided by 0 0.5 times V squared. We can substitute that because we've got the kinetic energy, which is 960 kilojoules. Watch out for the kilojoules. Um, let's convert that so that's 000 joules divided by 0 0.5 times the V is 40 times 40. Let's do it like that, make it longhand. Okay, so first of all, uh, 40 times 40, let's just make sure that was right, 40 times no, the calculator's gone completely barking mad. 40 times 40 times 0 0.5 equals, so 800. So we've got here 960000 divided by 800. Now I know a lot of you are better at the calculator than I am. 960000 divided by 800 equals 1200. So we've got a mass of 1200 kilograms. Joules are the base unit of energy, kilograms are the base unit of mass. Okay, so that was 1200. All right, part B. Only 5% of the energy is transferred to the kinetic energy. So calculate the total energy. So 1200 kilograms, 960000 joules is equal to 5%. What is equal to 100%? So it's 960000 divided by 5 times 100. Bit complicated, but let's try it. 960000 times 100 is equal to that. Divide that by 5. We get a huge number. 19 million two hundred thousand which is nineteen point two mega joules.